I Goodman, the, the name. The second you heard it, everything turned on a dime. Hey guys, Kiwi here. In this video, I'll be breaking down discussing Jimmy and Kim's first step to sabotaging Howard in Better Call Saul Season 6. Warning spoilers for Breaking Bad, El Camino, and Better Call Saul up to Season 6 Episode 2. Like the video if you end up enjoying it, subscribe to the channel, and follow me on Twitter for more Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad updates, and if you really enjoy what I do here, consider checking out my Patreon to help support the channel financially. With that being said, let's jump into the breakdown. In Episode 601, Jimmy and Kim are enjoying dinner at the El Camino Diner. After Kim gives multiple suggestions on how to give Saul Goodman a little more flair, she brings up conning Howard as if their plan is already in action. She says that she knows of a way to make Howard bruised but still standing, implying that she's only going to mess with Howard just enough to make the Sandpiper case settle so that they can get their share of millions. That being said, I think they're going to go overboard and end up destroying his career. Kim suggests that they start off with Cliff, but Jimmy just asks if they're really doing it. Jimmy has some clear hesitation here, but he still hears Kim out. Jimmy says, what the harm in listening even though he knows that he's going to reluctantly go along with it. Kim says that their plan has to be paced right and it has to make sense since if they're moving too fast they'll see them coming. Kim says that there has to be a reason for everything continuing to be vague. It's not until the camera moves outside of the diner window where we can't hear that I assume Kim gets into specifics. I think that Jimmy is off his game not just because of the cartel situations such as the traumatizing shootout in the desert along with the Lalo confrontation at Kim's apartment but also due to how Kim is developing into Slip and Kimmy, an action that Jimmy is responsible for. Jimmy liked being the one that took things too far while Kim pulled them back, but if Kim is the outgoing one, who will pull either of them back? Kim and Jimmy spy on Howard and Cliff golfing, and Kim says that Jimmy should have 45 minutes to safely pull off their con. Jimmy tells Kim that she should teach him how to play golf, and could this be foreshadowing to them doing so after this whole sandpiper situation is over and done with? Anyways, Jimmy walks into the clubhouse, but not before taking a big long look at Howard's Namaste Jaguar, showing that Howard either got his car fixed or got a new car ever since Jimmy threw bowling balls into it. In the clubhouse, Jimmy asks for a tour, and gets brought to the members lounge. As Jimmy starts getting shown around, Kevin appears and interrupts them, asking to speak with the man showing Jimmy around. After talking to Kevin, the man comes back to deny Jimmy his tour, giving the excuse that there's a two-year waiting list. Jimmy pushes to go on a tour anyways, but the man says that tours have been suspended. Jimmy knows that Kevin is the one denying him this tour, so as he starts to walk away, he thinks for a moment and then changes the plan to do something a little more impromptu. Jimmy calls out the employee for his excuses not adding up, along with calling the waiting list an exclusion list. I love the way that Jimmy plays up being a smartass here while calling out the BS. Jimmy then purposely starts making a scene about how he's being restricted and then pulls the anti-semitism card. The employees say that they have many Jewish members, to which Jimmy reforms by saying that they must have met their quote. To then. Jimmy pretends that he's Jewish here, and it's a reference to Saul talking to Walt, I believe, in Breaking Bad, saying that his real name is Jimmy McGill, but that he calls himself Goodman as a Jewish thing to win people over. This pisses off Kevin, who confronts Jimmy on his own BS in this moment, but this is exactly what Jimmy wanted. Jimmy's getting back at Kevin for denying him access. Kevin goes off, calling Jimmy just a list of hilarious names, which is just wow. Just I didn't expect to see Kevin ever again on this show, and I love how he returns here, even if it's just for a single moment. Kevin calls out Jimmy for not being Jewish, to which Jimmy says 5,000 years and it never ends in a fake crying voice. This is where people hold back Kevin as he goes to assault Jimmy, while Jimmy gives the line from the trailers, here it is, violence, it always comes to this. Kevin gets pulled away by his friends, and Jimmy pretends to be incredibly insulted towards the employee, using this leverage to be able to go to the bathroom. Jimmy's original plan was probably just to go use the bathroom during the tour, along with going to the locker room to plant the fake drugs, but Kevin changed his plans, causing him to make a scene in order to get the few moments he needed to still sabotage Howard. The thing is, Kevin was never part of the plan. I doubt that Jimmy or Kim ever expected to see Kevin there. So will this 
just come back and bite them in the ass? Will Kevin tell Howard or Cliff that he saw Jimmy at the clubhouse? Could that be Howard's proof that Jimmy planted fake drugs on him? Anyways, Jimmy goes and clogs the toilet with just a crazy amount of toilet paper as a distraction so that he can find out which locker number is Howard's. Meanwhile, Kim is still spying on Howard and Cliff playing golf, but notices that Howard gets a phone call, followed by the expression on Howard's face dropping. This causes Cliff and Howard to quit golfing early and go back to the clubhouse. Now, what was this phone call? Did it involve Kevin, or was it something completely unrelated? Maybe it's just something involving one of his other clients. Jimmy gets a warning text from Kim saying to abort due to Howard and Cliff returning, but Jimmy presses forward anyways, as he's not going to quit on the plan early after everything he's gone through, especially considering how close he is to accomplishing his goal. Jimmy sneaks into the locker room and plans fake drugs in Howard's locker in just such a way that it'll fall out onto the floor in front of Cliff. Jimmy is unable to escape the locker room before Cliff and Howard arrive, causing Jimmy to think of an interesting hiding place. Jimmy strips butt naked and covers his head with a towel, pretending to be a man drying his hair. This is quite the close call as Jimmy hides in plain sight, and wow, to be honest, I did not expect to see more Bob Odenkirk ass in the show, but I digress. Although Jimmy almost got caught, the plus side to the plan changing is that Jimmy's able to be there to hear the reaction of his scheme as Cliff and Howard see the fake drugs fall out of Howard's locker. Cliff points out that there's drugs on the floor, saying it's not the first time he's seen one of those. Howard says this is impossible and wonders where it came from. Cliff states how it obviously just fell out of his locker, but Howard doesn't understand how. Howard blames one of the other club members potentially stashing it there, and Cliff adds that maybe it was an employee. Howard's reaction here is genuinely honest, but it could be perceived as Howard playing innocent and pretending that the drugs aren't his when they are. Now obviously the drugs aren't his, and in fact they're not drugs at all, but baby powder, but Cliff does doesn't know that. This begins the initial seed planted in trying to get Cliff to believe that Howard is secretly addicted to cocaine. Jimmy returns to the car with Kim in it, and Kim asks what if they find out it's baby powder? Jimmy says they won't, but that could be blind confidence. If Howard thinks that someone is sabotaging him, he'll probably keep the evidence considering he's a lawyer. I could see Howard getting the fake drugs tested just to find out that they aren't drugs, but in fact baby powder. Also, once Howard wonders who's messing with him and why, he'll be able to instantly realize that it's Jimmy, because who else would it be? Since Howard was able to figure out that it was Jimmy messing with him in season 5, throwing bowling balls at his car and sending hookers to his lunch, Jimmy will be his prime suspect. Kim thinks that this is too subtle, but it's the exact opposite. Jimmy says it's just right, and maybe, but I still think that planting fake drugs in someone's locker is a pretty big deal. The fact that Kim thinks that this is subtle just shows how full force no breaks she wants to go with this. So Jimmy's the one that's now pulling her back, but not by much, as Jimmy can be quite the driving force himself. He just used to be the outlandish one and feels slightly uncomfortable with Kim being the same way now. So what do you think about the new slip-in Jimmy and Kimmy dynamic? I think that the wine and roses symbolism here is strong, and I'm nervous for what it's going to look like by the middle point of Season 6. Let me know of your thoughts and opinions in the comments below, and we'll continue this discussion in one of my next videos where I break down the return of the Kettlemans. I'd appreciate a like on the video if you've enjoyed anything that I've said today, and if you're new to the channel or just haven't yet already, subscribe and hit that bell notification to stay updated on when I post new content on Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad. I thank you all so much for watching, and until next time, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out! You're about as Jewish as my Aunt Fanny. 5,000 years and it never ends. Nope. Not too subtle. Perfect. Put you two-faced, blackmailing, money-grubbing son money of a bitch. You're saying the quiet part out loud, I think.